Hey folks, in this video we're going to be talking about an exciting research project entitled Explanatory Semantic Relatedness and Explicit Spatialization for Exploratory Search. Uh, this project is really great for this course because it's a wonderful example of how the uh, spatial domain and the computing domain can work together for their mutual advancement. Now, in particular, this project has uh, made contributions to the literature on spatialization, as we discussed in Module 7. In fact, uh, we introduced the idea of explicit spatialization in this paper. Um, but then we also leveraged this contribution to really innovate in information retrieval, which is an area of uh, computer science. So you can see the feedback loop here going with uh, uh, computer science helping um, cartography and cartography helping uh, computer science. So as you might guess, uh, this project is a, a quite close interdisciplinary collaboration. Um, a bunch of us are trained in computer science, but three of us also have backgrounds in geographic information science, which is obviously a field quite close to spatial computing. OK, so let's step back here and uh, provide a little motivation. I think we all know that using any one of these fine search engines here, it's a relatively easy task to, for instance, uh, find out who the mayor of Minneapolis is. In fact, using uh, Google and Bing these days, you'll get a direct answer. I'm sure many of you are familiar with this particular feature. Um, you can also find the, a web page of basically anything. So for instance, uh, with, with just one query, I found the web page for this uh, spatial computing MOOC here. Um, you may be familiar with it. But what happens if you are a student who's been given the task of writing a detailed report on nuclear weapons, or perhaps more consequentially, you're a consultant or an intelligence analyst who's been asked to do the same thing? Well, in this case, uh, Google basically is just going to point you to the nuclear weapons page on Wikipedia, and you're going to have to do the rest of the work yourself. So as it turns out, this is actually a very well-known situation in the information retrieval literature. So Google and Bing are known to be outstanding at what are called closed information requests, like, for instance, finding out who the mayor of Minneapolis is. And uh, they're also known to be outstanding at navigational queries, like take me to the web page uh, for the uh, spatial computing MOOC. Uh, but they're much worse at what is known as exploratory search. And now, exploratory search has been defined by White and Roth as defining an information-seeking problem context that is open-ended, persistent, and multifaceted. Exploratory search systems support this through symbiotic human-machine relationships that provide guidance in exploring unfamiliar information landscapes. Now, you can imagine this last line here, exploring unfamiliar information landscapes. This made those of us with a background in uh, a geographic information science, uh, it made us quite excited. Now, the reason it made us quite excited is that uh, we recognize that thematic cartography has been shown over, over a very long time uh, to be effective at helping people understand complex and unfamiliar information landscapes. We saw a little bit about this in uh, Module 7, right? So the big question for us is, uh, how can we convert an abstract, non-geographically referenced query concept, like for instance, nuclear weapon, into a form that like obesity rates by state, um, or uh, poverty rates by state, like we saw earlier, um, into a form that can be visualized using thematic cartography? Well, um, the first thing a lot of people suggest when uh, we pose this question is to just use Google Maps. But uh, Google Maps, like its parent search engine, is largely designed for navigational queries and closed information requests. So for instance, here is the result of querying Google Maps for nuclear weapons, or at least this is the result as of um, a, a little while ago. Um, as you can see, this is basically just a map of mu museums and advocacy organizations that are related to nuclear weapons uh, and that have a web presence, um, obviously for exploratory search here there's a little bit missing. Uh, for instance, um, there's nothing about uh, current events related to nuclear weapons, and there's a little bit missing about the history of nuclear weapons as well. So this is where a system we built called Atlasify comes in, and I'm going to show you what Atlasify can do, and then we'll talk about the really cool ways it, it does it, um, and you'll see that uh, a lot of what we've learned in uh, Module 7 and Module 6 as well um, comes in here. Um, and, and turns out to be pretty handy. So uh, without further ado, um, here is the results of, uh, uh, here's, here's uh, Atlasphy showing the results of a query for nuclear weapon. Now in this map, uh, like most choropleth maps, right, or like all choropleth maps uh, done well here, the dark green or the dark color indicates areas that are very related to nuclear weapons, and the lighter green areas indicate areas that are less related, right? So in this case, we have a quantitative uh, spatial attribute, uh, relatedness, and we're visualizing it using the appropriate quantitative um, choropleth map strategies. Now, you can see that in contrast to the Google Maps result we saw earlier, uh, current events are strongly incorporated, uh, as is the geographic history of nuclear weapons. 
Um, you can uh, zoom in and zoom out like any modern uh, geographic technology, and we can see that, as we might expect, uh, Nevada and New Mexico are both indicated to be highly related to nuclear weapons. Um, so it's great that you can see the information landscape of places related to your query concept, in this case, nuclear weapons. Uh, but uh, if you're anything like me, uh, very quickly after you use this system, you want to know uh, how are these places related, right? So for example, if we uh, move on over here to Sub-Saharan Africa, uh, let's say I'm curious about why South Africa is so related to nuclear weapons. Now in Atlas Phi, you can click on any geographic entity, and Atlas Phi is going to display a list of relationships between the clicked entity and the query concept in understandable natural language. Uh, this involves some natural language processing, which we'll briefly touch on at the end of this video. So here it's saying that South Africa began a nuclear weapons program in the late 70s. And uh, moving down the list here, uh, we find out that it later de um, destroyed its arsenal and joined the Nuclear Non-Proliferation non Treaty. So uh, hopefully what I've shown you so far gives you an idea of the power of this particular um, exploratory search approach. Um, but like, uh, um, like uh, when we were discussing things in the, uh, in the fifth video of Module 7, right, when we were talking about spatialization, what, we've, what I've described to you so far is uh, limited in, very one, uh, in one very important way, and that is that it only works in geography, just like we were talking about with spatialization. So the problem here is that exploratory search, of course, goes well beyond geography, right? People do exploratory searches about chemistry, about politics, and so on and so forth, and of course, uh, across domain exploratory searches as well. So uh, in, in our Atlas V project, uh, in, this research, in this research paper, um, we developed techniques that allowed us to uh, use the exact same approaches we used to create this uh, related map, relatedness map, excuse me, and use those approaches to create this map. Now, as you can see here, this is the same query concept, a nuclear weapon, um, but here it's visualized on the periodic table reference system rather than the world map reference system, right? We learned a little bit about this in Module 7. Um, this is an explicitly spatialized reference system, in this case using the periodic table. Um, you can zoom in and zoom out. Um, note that uranium and plutonium are indicated to be highly related. And just like with geography, you can click on a spatial entity and uh, get uh, natural language explanations of the relationships between the clicked entity and the query concept. So in this case, the user clicked on, it looks like cobalt, and the system is showing relationships between nuclear weapon and cobalt. So we've gone uh, all out here with the explicit spatialization, and uh, Atlas V supports a number of different reference systems. So for example, here is the US Senate seating chart reference system. We have the same. Um, uh, we have the same query concept here, nuclear weapon, but it's visualized instead of on uh, the world map and instead of on the periodic table. It's the U.S. Senate seating chart. It's a little bit of an old seating chart. There are some senators who have moved on and some senators uh, who are new, uh, but you get the basic idea. Um, here is the same query concept, nuclear weapon, on the timeline reference system and so on and so forth. These are just four of the 13 reference systems uh, Atlas V is uh, currently supporting in, in various states of completion. I'll note that we're hoping to launch Atlas Phi to the public um, early in 2015, uh, so keep your eyes peeled to atlasphi.com for that. Um, I'm going to shift away from the system now and talk about the how. Um, so we've seen, right, that we can convert a query concept like nuclear weapon into something that can be visualized using thematic cartography, and we've seen that we can do this in reference systems from arbitrary domains. Um, how are we able to do this? Well, you've already learned a little bit about how we did this in Module 6, and that is that we use semantic relatedness estimates. And in this case, we built a state-of-the-art semantic relatedness measure, um, and uh, the uh, output of this measure is our quantitative spatial attribute that we're visualizing using thematic cartography. So for example, these states here had um, a much higher relatedness value to um, nuclear weapons than, for instance, um, Alabama over here. OK, so hopefully this description of our Atlas V project really gives you an idea of uh, some exciting new stuff going on in spatial computing. And then also, just to reinforce this point, uh, it really demonstrates how the spatial and the computing work together to uh, benefit both. So we have uh, semantic relatedness measures from natural language processing powering new techniques in spatialization, which then power um, new techniques in exploratory search, which is, again, a computing area. So um, a very rich uh, feedback loop there. And with that, um, I will see you in the next video.